Hello and welcome. Thank you everyone for joining us. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night. We are very thankful to have people joining us from all over the world. Welcome to the event, Solar Cooking's Positive Impacts for Women and the Environment. This is part of the United Nations Climate Dialogues. We are Solar Cookers International and we will be presenting with the Women and Gender Constituency. This webinar will be recorded and we will be sharing the recording on the Solar Cookers International website on our blog section. We invite you to share it with your friends and colleagues. All participants will be muted during the presentation to preserve sound quality. If you have questions throughout the presentation, please type them into the chat box. We will address them as time allows during the question and answer session at the end. I'm Caitlin Hughes, the Executive Director with Solar Cookers International. Today, you will also be hearing from Dr. Alan Bigelow, the Science Director and Main Representative to the United Nations from Solar Cookers International. You'll also be hearing from Ann Barr of the Women and Gender Constituency and Dr. Mrs. Jonak Palta McGilligan, a Solar Cookers International Global Advisor. Today, we will be sharing with you about what is a solar cooker? Dr. And Mrs. Jonak Palta McGilligan will be sharing about the importance of solar cooking based on her experiences in India. We will also share who is Solar Cookers International? How do we work through advocacy, research, and building capacity? We'll share how to engage with Solar Cookers International, and Anne Barr will share about the background, purpose, and some example projects of solar cooking from the Women and Gender Constituency. Then we'll be happy to answer your questions at the end. So now I'd like to introduce Dr. Alan to share about what a solar cooker is. Hello, thank you, Caitlin. And thank you everybody for joining us today. Just to review what is a solar cooker, these are appliances, cooking appliances, or a device that collects and absorbs direct sunlight and retains the heat to cook food. This can also be used for pasteurizing water. We have three types of solar cookers shown here. I'd like to just mention the reflective panel, a box oven, and a parabolic reflector. Hundreds of versions of these different types of cookers exist, and it is a dynamic and exciting field where this technology can be used for clean and sustainable cooking of food. Some complementary technologies just to mention are heat retained baskets, which can be used to continue the cooking process once the temperatures of cooking has been reached, and also water pasteurization indicators that are useful for checking when the water is pasteurized, when microbes are eradicated. You will also be hearing later about some solar drying applications, so stay tuned for that. A few other types of solar cookers are shown here, perhaps more modern types of solar cookers. The evacuated tube, which is similar to a thermos with a transparent skin, and then added reflectors to gather light. There are also designs using Fresnel lenses and Fresnel mirrors, which essentially take large, what would typically be large lenses or mirrors that concentrate light and create a more or less flat version out of them, which makes the whole system lighter and cheaper. Finally, I'd like to touch base on a large scale example of a solar cooker. This is an institutional solar steam cooker that is at the Vajra Academy in Nepal. On the rooftop of this school, there is the system of concentrating dishes that focus light to reflectors, sorry, to receivers where water passing through those sections is heated to steam. And then the steam passes down through plumbing to an indoor kitchen downstairs, as pictured here. And then you can see 
some of the food that is created at that kitchen. Uh, these are momos, a delicious traditional dish in Nepal. So that's a quick review of the different types of solar cookers. And now it really is a pleasure to introduce a strong collaborator and advocate for solar cooking. This is Dr. Mrs. Janak Palta McGilligan. And she has a message that she would like to share with you today. Here she goes. I am Janak Palta McGilligan from Central India. Today we are going to talk about positive impact of solar cooking in rural communities of India. I have a long journey for more than 35 years working with rural and tribal women. And when I started working in 1985, first time I traveled and I spent about 300 days and nights in more than 300 villages of a tribal area nearby. Indore is the name of the city. And I was a director of Burley Development Institute for Rural Women. And I had to go and see the communities and see what are their needs and how could we, how could we start our training program. I was very shocked to see that most of the tribal villages areas were completely deforested. But wherever I spent the night, I saw women cooking starting from 4 o'clock in the morning till 7 in the evening. All the time the cooking was on fire open fire. It was smoky. And there are no, there's one room which has children, which has old people, which has chickens and goats and cow and everything. It was a huge shock for me, but I, I, my role was to understand their issues and uh, facilitate the process of involving them where they could learn literacy and health and uh, and be responsible for bringing positive changes in their own communities. So we, we were very concerned and finding solutions. It was just after two, three years that I, I found out that the government of India, I read in the newspaper, has started a program of uh, giving solar box cookers on a subsidized rate for anybody. Anybody could buy that. So we, my, myself and some other local people, we talked about it. And I, I, I got very interested and I myself bought a solar cooker, box cooker, and I started learning how to cook. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the people now can't imagine a uh, uh, time uh, without Google, without internet, without uh, YouTube, or th there was no, we, we didn't have even phones. We didn't have even traveling arrangements so much easily. But I, I saw there was a small leaflet in that boxed cooker. I opened it, I started uh, trying it, and I was, I was very happy that it works so well, it's so beautiful. And it, it cooks food, it's very nice. And then I was keen to talk to people about it, and very, in few, it was a summer time, in few months, I knew some of the people who had bought the box cookers, and we were talking about it, and most of the people said it doesn't work, it's where it takes long time, and everybody sort of uh, rejected 
मे बी हार्डली वन परसेंट ऑफ द पीपल हु वर वेरी पैशनेट अबाउट यूज इट सो वन ऑफ द लेसन आई लर्न फ्रॉम दैट एक्सपीरियंस वॉज बिफोर गिविंग टेक्नोलॉजी टू द पीपल आई एम टॉकिंग स्पेशली अबाउट सोलर कुकर unless a user or a woman knows how to use it how to maintain it how to clean it and how to innovate it it won't work so uh, we i started showing them when they were coming to the institute some time i took the box cooker also in the village place and i used to show them uh they they were very reluctant but they also gave the reason that they have to cook in the morning and they their food pattern is different and they they don't eat rice and those things and they they have goats and they can't leave the box cooker in the open area it can be if the some but it doesn't change the look the direction it won't work so still i was working and very keen on finding solutions it took few more years when i was invited to rio de janeiro for earth summit by unep so at unep forum of ngos and i was also invited to receive the global 500 role of honor for my institute i i came fully charged with the commitment that i have to i have to live a life where i'll save energy i'll save environment we will plant more trees and uh, how to how to uh, relieve women from smoke by this time i had a uh, i had a i had married with an irish man both of us Uh, have been followers of bahai faith and quite uh, quite uh, ready to learn and find solutions and change so uh, we started contacting people finding people and then we found somebody like deepak gadia who makes a solar kitchen shefler wolfgang shefler is the innovator of solar kitchen so we thought let us make a solar kitchen in our own institute where the girls stay for 6 months and they learn how to use solar cooker and they 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 start believing and trusting so they it happened so this was the first solar kitchen in central india which where we could cook for 100 girls in 300 days Uh, sunny days india has the central india we have lot of sunshine for about 300 days so it it helped it stimulated it encouraged all the girls to to ask this question how can they take solar cooking home how can they have in their own homes so again my husband's name was jimmy magilligan so he and me both were uh, very keen and then we met somebody uh, who were keen to start par- parabolic cookers and giving it free to the about 100 cookers to the tribal area so we gave the we got the cookers we gave it to them and we found remarkable results the girls said after 8 years when we did the study again that the cookers were good for domestic use and they could also start some making food sweets and salt salty things to sell they also became entrepreneur then self micro credit groups were trained and they were so excited no more jimmy and i used to say cooking in smoky kitchen this violence against women so we were very happy with the uh, parabolic cooker we found that more and more people were interested and then both of us by now i can say that i have been able to facilitate the process of uh, more than 1000 solar cookers uh, given taken by the people not really given to the people on demand and then 
it had a beautiful impact when the women said that while going to the jungles for collecting wood they were always subject to sexual abuse rape and and carrying heavy load could cause their uh, miscarriages when they were at advanced stage of pregnancy it was it was very heartening for me to know that technology has connection with dignity of women equality of women then they said this is such a smart cooker before this only women were cooking in the smoke but now any guest comes a man my husband my son anybody goes out and they start making tea serving tea uh, and it is a gender friendly cooker so men also started getting involved then after that uh, my retirement i moved to a village where i'm living and now i have been uh, able to facilitate this process even in my village there is a solar tea stall the the young boy makes 1400 rupees in 3 hours this cookers were facilitated by solar cooker international some donors gave subsidize 90% so i find it's very useful i am very fortunate to be global advisor of sci i was invited to uh, solar sustainable development goals conference in 2017 and after that also uh, i have been invited to more than 100 institutions schools and colleges and i have trained 86000 youths in how to use solar cooker we arrange solar food festival we teach people how to make natural colors for festivals and i teach people in this covid period i teach people how to make home sanitizer with the natural products so i integrated with the biodiversity and farming and it has beautiful impacts on the lives of women and men and i think we need to we need to speed up and scale up this movement of solar cooking we cannot achieve sustainable development goals and sdg 5 demands women to be empowered and they should enjoy good health and they should have been not discriminated and this cooker is good for all the men and women to cook so it's a it it brings gender equality it brings more respect to women and it saves the environment thank you very much for uh, having me Thank you so much Donak for those inspiring words. We are honored to have you sharing your experience with us. So to build on some of the reasons that Donak shared with us about the need and the importance for solar cooking, we collectively are working to address the challenge that affects 3 billion, that's right with a B, so roughly 40% of the world's population who are still cooking over open fires. And unfortunately, it's primarily women who bear the burdens and the negative impacts of this challenge. Uh for example, gathering biomass fuel. So this can look like walking miles to chop down wood and then have to carry it back so that their family can cook with it. Um obviously these loads can be very heavy and unfortunately that also comes with risks for animal tax or gender-based violence. Um so we are working to prevent that with solar cooking. Cooking over open fires also brings increased risks for obstructive pulmonary disease uh, such as chronic bronchitis. Uh, in fact, that's 3 times more likely with household air pollution. It also increases the risk for type 2 diabetes, polycystic ovarian disease, cataracts. This actually can be a huge challenge um with people developing a hard time to see, which then makes all the other essential activities of life really hard. Of course burns are a huge risk. Um often women are taking care of their children who then are also in the area and at risk for experiencing burns or falling into the fire and we want to prevent that. Uh breathing in these heavy levels of smoke on a daily basis can also impair cognition and judgment as well as spatial learning and memory and obviously this has impacts for the current generation but also future generations as well. Uh it can also cause mutations in over 68 genes. and also lead to cervical and lung cancer. 
And there are additional risks, especially for mothers, um, because cooking over open fires and experiencing those levels of household air pollution can increase risk for fetal thrombosis, can increase stillbirths and infant mortality, it can increase infertility, preeclampsia or eclampsia, intrauterine growth retardation, low birth weight, preterm delivery, and poor lung maturation. So obviously we would like to prevent all of these things with solar cooking. So to build on some of those experiences that John shared with us, solar cooking has such positive impacts for the environment and for women because there is zero fuel cost. Um, a lot of the families that we work with otherwise could spend up to 40% of their family's financial resources on fuel. But if they can save that and put that towards healthcare, education, more food, uh, income generation, that really helps the entire family, but the entire community now and in the future. There's zero air pollution, zero greenhouse gas emissions, which is so important in our discussion of climate. Zero inhalation of smoke, uh, as we talked about zero timer danger from collecting biomass fuel, and then that time can also be used for other things as well. Uh, solar cooking reduces deforestation and can cook nutritious meals. It can also be used for drying food, which increases food security and also can add value to food products so that that can be another source of income generation. Solar cookers can also pasteurize water, which is really important for people who might not have access to a clean water source. It can also be helpful in emergencies. Solar cooking is great for both mitigation and adaptation uh, in terms of the climate. It's affordable and accessible, and it requires no infrastructure. One of the reasons I love solar cooking is it's something that everyone can start doing today. Uh, we actually have plans on our website on how you can make one, uh, which Alan will talk more about later in our presentation. So we've shared with you why solar cooking is important. So who is Solar Cookers International? We are the nonprofit leading the solar cooking sector, and we have been working for more than 30 years to improve human and environmental health by supporting the expansion of clean and sustainable solar cooking in vulnerable regions. We are fortunate to have the opportunity to work with hundreds of collaborators in about 140 countries, and we are very thankful for this strong network because it takes all of us working together to make solar cooking accessible to 3 billion people. So how do we work? Uh, how are we going to get solar cooking accessible to these 3 billion people? And through Solar Cookers International Strategic Plan, we have found capacity building, advocacy, and research as three ways that we can have a strong impact with you. So advocacy. This is a perfect example right now. Um, we are fortunate to have the opportunity to participate in events like the High Level Political Forum, these climate dialogues, uh, the United Nations Climate Conferences. Um, and we do this to encourage government and civil society organizations to include solar cooking in their policies, work, and investments. We've met so many people who are just excited to hear about solar cooking and recognize what a powerful solution it is for their country and for their people. Solar cooking positively impacts all 17 sustainable development goals. Uh, Jonic referenced them, and we have more information on our website about the details around these positive impacts. As I mentioned, we are encouraging countries to include solar cooking in their national policies. For example, their nationally determined contributions. This is each country's plan in terms of how they are addressing climate change. And there's a lot of opportunity for recognition excuse me, to include solar cooking as a solution. And this opens up even more opportunities for collaboration. <coughs> excuse me, so now I'd like to introduce Alan. Thank you, Caitlin. To carry on with SCI strategic plan, I'd like to talk a little bit about our research program. And this is essentially based on product testing. Solar Cookers International, is a neutral organization. We are a brand agnostic organization, meaning we do not promote one solar cooker over another. However, we, given that we are neutral, uh, we were well positioned to develop a testing program, which we have done. Our program harmonizes with the recently published standards by the International Organization for Standardization. And there are several tests within those standards 
And one of them happens to be for performance. And I'd like to highlight that right now because this is uh, our, what we're doing at SCI currently. We're able to test solar cookers for their thermal performance. It's a measurement in watts, so it'll be a, a single figure. And it essentially would let the user know how fast water heats over time. And it's pretty much straightforward like that. And it can um, help consumers or those interested in investing in solar cooking make informed decisions. This certainly brings credibility to the sector where just a few years ago, we did not have an internationally agreed upon method on how to test solar cookers, but we have that now. So Solar Cookers International has developed instrumentation to automate the test, as you can see in the pictures here. Not only are we doing this at Solar Cookers International sites in California and New York, but we have also equipped two collaborative uh, groups, one in Nepal and one in Kenya, with instrumentation and also the training. And this increases local knowledge and ownership and prominence of solar cooking. We have been testing solar cookers the past few years. So the cookers that you see here have all either been tested or are in process of being tested. So uh, the, the ones who have been tested, you can find the reports on our website and, and see the results of those solar cookers. The two cookers on the right of the screen, the, the Glenergy and the U-Log are still in the process of being tested. But this is a very exciting program and uh, SCI is glad that this is also uh, being spread around the world to raise the level of accountability for solar cooking devices. On building capacity, this is our third part of our strategic plan at Solar Cookers International. I'd like to introduce you all to the John Collentine Solar Cooking Toolkit. This is named after a, de a dedicated solar cooking advocate, and it's essentially a method to streamline visitors to the website to find the information that they're looking for. SCI has an extraordinary amount of free information on the website um, at solarcookers.org, but also on our wiki pages, which I'll mention in a moment. So through these modules that are designed for multiple audiences, multiple purposes, people who visit the site and use the toolkit can find the information that they're looking for quickly. Now, a lot of this information is based on the experience from the sector, such as what you were hearing from Janak McGilligan earlier what she has experienced and learned. This encapsul encapsulates what the sector now knows. And this body of information, uh, for instance, is, is contained within the Solar Cooking Wiki. It's an extraordinary resource, over 1,700 pages of information. It's the world's largest online solar cooking database. And this also automatically translates into 46 languages. So it's extremely user friendly. It's also interactive. So those of you who are involved in solar cooking activities can add information and content to the solar cooking wiki. Please use it. Um, Caitlin mentioned that I would uh, talk about how you can make your own solar cooker. <laughs> and this actually is an important aspect of how one can obtain a solar cooker. Essentially, one can buy one or one can make one. So SCI on its website and also on the wiki pages uh, provides a number of open source design plans how to make your own cooker. Uh, this can be very helpful in areas where the materials are available locally, but it might be costly to import product. I do want to mention a suggestion from one of our manufacturers in the sector who said, okay, well, we would like to compete with those who would choose to make their own. So please don't uh, forget about us. Give us a call, talk to us, and we would like to be competitive with, uh, with those who make their own. So I'm just passing that, that word along. SCI is, is active in collecting information on where solar cookers are around the world. Here is a map that shows four plus million solar cookers worldwide and counting. This is a map that SCI has compiled 
from the sector. So people who are involved in solar cooking projects, as they inform SCI about where they are working, what types of solar cookers they're using, how many they have deployed in certain areas, we are compiling this on this map to show impact that 14 million people directly impacted by solar thermal cooking, 7.5 billion meals solar cooked, preventing over 30 million tons of CO2 emissions. This is an impact that connects with the goals of the United Nations fight against climate change. Now, the impacts of the number of solar cookers can also be expressed environmentally and economically. SCI has produced some impact summaries which are available on our website, country by country. Please come and, and visit uh, the site and, and use, these, uh, use these freely and widely. I'd like to mention survey tools. This is an important aspect to solar cooking projects. SCI has provided these tools. These were assembled through working groups and, it, and through this collaborative effort, two surveys that are very important. One, the quick needs assessment, basically will, will evaluate the need and the desire for individuals and, com and communities that might be um, candidates for solar cooking projects. It is a critical step towards success to gauge interest and, and the, the need. Uh, once the project starts, it's important to get a baseline um, assessment. So the adoption and impact survey will gather baseline data. And also later after participants have been using solar cookers, we have a post-distribution list of questions in that survey to really quantify the change of what, what has happened in people's lives before they started using solar cookers to after they have uh, become experts in solar cooking. So this is certainly important for adding to the global database and evidence base for solar cooking, which is very useful when we get into high-level conversations at the United Nations events. An example of how these building capacity tools are useful, I just want to highlight a, a collaborative pro project that SCI is involved with in Kenya. So SCI is working with Ecomandate Foundation over the past few years using an open source solar box oven design that you see pictured here. This particular model can be manufactured in Kenya by Kenyans using material found in Kenya and for use in Kenya. And that's exactly what's happening on, in this project. These cookers are implemented at Kakuma Refugee Camp, which is in Northern Kenya. This is empowering women refugees to use the solar cookers. Um, it frees them of the, the smoke and the tremendous effort that women go through to access firewood. In refugee camps such as this one, there is not enough firewood provided for the refugees to cook. So it's a, it's a great stress reliever to bring in solar cookers and help the women. These women solar cooks who become experts sometimes become trainers the following year, which is extremely exciting. This program so far has provided solar cooked meals for uh, 700 refugees, and our goal for this coming year is to empower an additional 460. There is a cost savings. So in the picture here, Charity and her daughter, they have reduced their cooking fuel expenses um, on the order of $4 per week. And that is significant for refugee families. I'd like to turn this back over to Caitlin to talk about how to engage with SCI. Caitlin? Thank you, Alan, for that informative overview of the different ways that SCI works through research, building capacity, and advocacy. So I'm sure you're all wondering how to engage with Solar Cookers International, and there are lots of ways to do so. First and foremost, we encourage you to sign up for information so you can be aware of what's happening and future opportunities. We do encourage you to access Solar Cookers International's resources. This is how we support the sector and share that information, both on solarcookers.org and solarcooking.org. 
we encourage you to join the Solar Cookers International Association. So this is kind of like a, a professional membership. So our high impact collaborators are able to have additional access to networking opportunities, research, promotion, uh, those sorts of things. And there are different levels with that. We encourage you to consult Solar Cookers International. There's a list of the services that we are able to provide uh, on that. And so you can learn more about that. And most importantly, we do encourage you to include solar cooking in your individual organization and country's work policies and support. This is a global movement and it takes all of us working together. So become a solar cook yourself, figure out how to include it in your work and also encourage your country to include it in their official policies. This doesn't happen with any single one of us. It happens with all of us working together. So I would like to say a big thank you to the Solar Cookers International staff team. Uh, there's many more people beyond just Alan and myself who are working to make this happen tirelessly. So a big thank you to them. We are very fortunate to have an incredibly dedicated team of volunteers, including our board of directors, global advisors, and also many people who help us with this advocacy work. Thank you to Solar Cookers International Associates and collaborators, and also very importantly, our Solar Cookers International supporters, because we cannot do this work without your support. So thank you, uh, especially to our President Circle members and our Legacy Circle members. Our Legacy Circle members have decided to make a gift uh, in the future so that SEI can continue addressing these global challenges with your support. And now I'd like to introduce Anne Barr of the Women and Gender Constituency to share more from that perspective. Thank you, Anne. Thank you, Kathleen. I hope you can all see me and hear me well. Uh, I've learned so much right now and how fortunate is the Women and Gender Constituency that SCI has joined our coalition. So my name is Anne Barr and I work for Women Engage for a Common Future, an NGO that is one of the founding members of the Women and Gender Constituency uh, and observers of the climate negotiations. Uh, I will today present you uh, some of the elements of our advocacy work and also how we consider that solar cooking is fundamental for women's empowerment and how we use solar cooking in some of uh, the field projects that we conduct at WECF. Uh, so if you can go to the next slide, I will start uh, introducing the women and gender constituency. So even though the climate negotiations started already in the beginning of this century and in, in the 2000s, uh, it was only in 2009 that the uh, uh, women and gender constituency was founded as an observer, and then recognized uh, with the full statute of a constituency in 2011. Uh, it took uh, the voluntary effort of uh, six NGOs to, to start this movement uh, and this coalition, and now we are 34 NGO members. And as I said, uh, with the very fortunate to have also the Solar Cooking International Organization joining us. Uh, in the next slide, I will show you a bit of what we are here for, and what is our role and our advocacy work. So the Women and Gender Constituency represents uh, women and gender equality in the climate processes, in the climate negotiations. So it's about access and power during the COPs, during the Conference of the Parties. That's the meaning of this abbreviation. We host advocacy and media skills trainings. Uh, we act as a communication channel to the Secretariat. We coordinate opportunities for interventions. We host daily morning meetings and discussion spaces for feminists attending the negotiations. And also we have advocates for gender just climate policies. We write position papers and submissions. Any in, in Interruption? No, okay, sorry. So our action is not only at the advocacy level, of course, the 34 members of our network are all themselves a uh, network of smaller organizations that are working on the ground uh, with communities and women all over, all around the world. 
and women in all their diversities. So we wanted to showcase that uh, we are, our advocacy is really grounded into field work. And we uh, created in 2015, during COP21 in Paris, the Gender Just Climate Solutions. Uh, and it's an award that basically showcases, highlights, and supports gender responsive climate action from the ground. And really, this supports uh, our advocacy work. And it supports us so well that we have created pedagogical tools around um, the award winners and their actions, uh, but also explaining how you can integrate gender into climate policies better. And we have created a mentorship program to help upscale and really take these really fantastic initiatives into a, a, a much bigger dimension. Uh, so at the next, um, I want to give you just a few highlights of how slow the gender mainstreaming into climate negotiations has been. Uh, I won't go through all of these dates, but as you see, the first time somebody talked about gender equality was in Marrakesh in 2001. Uh, and it took almost 17 years uh, to get to the first gender action plan in 2017. 2014 was the Lima work program on gender, but it was only a commitment from the parties um, to integrate uh, at least some kind of gender assessment into their climate policies. 2017 was uh, an, the adoption of the gender action plan, which means that the really first step to have very clear objectives with dedicated actions um, and timelines. Uh, and on the next uh, slide, I can show you how we we got to there. So in Marrakesh, 10 years after, uh, even 15 years after <laughs> 2001, so in 2016, uh, there was a gender decision that was adopted by all the countries, uh, which was to reconduct this first work program on gender and to really work on a gender action plan especially improving gender balance, building the women delegates' capacities, working on the coherence uh, between all the UNFCCC mechanisms and bodies so that all of them would integrate gender, um, and then also to start having some monitoring so that we know whether we are prog progressing or not. But uh, one element that is important to understand, there was no budget for this gender action plan that was adopted then next year uh, in 2017. So on the next slide. Um, yeah, so I'll speed it up here a little bit, just showing you that uh, there are five important areas of this action plan. Capacity building, gender balance and participation, the coherence, means of implementation. So even though the UNFCCC does not have a dedicated budget, the countries are asked to bring in some means of implementation and then also monitoring and reporting. And fortunately, this gender action plan was renewed last year in Madrid in 2019. Next slide. And as you see, we have kept all these areas of focus with more um, progressive and more ambitious uh, goals uh, that now enable us to go deep dive into national actions uh, and, for example, integrating gender budgetings uh, in the national budgets of the countries. So in, in the next slide, uh, I will give you a few elements of reality check and why it is so important uh, to integrate gender into all aspects of the climate negotiations. Well, first of all, um, the gender balance in the delegations. So in 2015, sorry, we thought we were doing quite good with 38% uh, of the delegates being women. But actually, if you look at uh, the progress over the year, you would see that in Paris, uh, only 10% of the delegates uh, were women, and that 
is because the negotiations were getting harder. So when the challenge and the political meaning becomes very uh, difficult, let's say, uh, you would see that uh, the gender balance uh, is reduced. And also, if you then look across the different continents, you see very uh, differing um, uh, gender balance also among the delegations. Next slide. We have also a reality check uh, looking at the funding mechanisms of the Climate Convention. Many of those um, uh, fund, funds uh, have not reached uh, the gender balance uh, in their committees, in their boards, so that uh, when it comes to decisions on what type of climate action you are going to fund, there is a bias and sometimes a very strong bias. If you look at the clean development mechanism, for example, which is all the, the private funding uh, and the climate um, uh, finance that comes from compensation, carbon compensations, you will see that uh, you find very little number of women there. So, for example, not the type of uh, boards that might decide for funding solar cooking. <laughs> Uh, let's go to the next slide now. Um, another last uh, reality check is on the climate policies themselves, national um, determined contributions. Um, only a third of the, those that have been presented in Paris uh, were really mentioning gender and uh, less even were mentioning gender in relation with climate mitigation. Whereas, uh, as you have seen in the presentations before by Solar Cookers International, um, gender mainstreaming in climate adaptation is very important. And what happens with uh, solar cooking is nothing else than climate mitigation. Uh, next slide. Yeah, fortunately, thanks to those two gender action plans, we see now that among the parties and the people uh, who negotiate on climate policies, the perceptions are changing slowly. So uh, now women uh, are not only considered as victims, but really as change agents. Uh, we go from an idea of increasing the participation into an idea of really analyzing which are the gender inequalities that are persistent, the structural barriers that uh, prevent us from having just and ambitious climate action. And also, we now have gender and climate focal points uh, in more than 50 countries, and they are responsible for making sure that the gender dimension is integrated into the national climate plans. And it is all about integrating gender in every single step of a climate policy uh, and in every single sector. So not only water and agriculture, as we see here, uh, but also, for example, energy. Uh, next slide. I hope I'm not running too much out of time. I really want to take the time to present to you some of the projects um, that we are running. So WECF, as a member of the Women and Gender Constituency, has uh, long ago already recognized how important it is to uh, better integrate the gender uh, equality in uh, energy in the energy sector and how women can be real agents of change uh, in terms of energy transition. So for example, in Morocco, we are working with two partners, um, a foundation and a union of cooperatives uh, that work uh, on producing argan oil. Uh, in the south of Morocco, uh, it is the same as what Dr. Janak Palta described. Women uh, are still cooking meals uh, under open fire, and they still have to collect wood. Some of them will use charcoal or gas, but uh, very few use uh, solar cooking. Although uh, the south of Morocco has uh, benefits from sun almost every day. So uh, there is uh, really such a great potential. Uh, women are energy managers at the home. Um, their work is unpaid. Uh, and this big workload of preparing the meal and, and taking care of the family is a, is a strong burden. 
on their shoulders uh, and on their health also because of the open fire uh, uh, methodology that they use. Uh, there is also a lack of conscience of the inequalities and they have little or no decision-making power. Uh, so how can we, uh, through solar energy, change that situation? Well, as I explained, Morocco has a lot of sun. So the sun, solar energy is a strong element of Morocco's national climate policy. But until now, it has really been promoted by the Moroccan government as these huge solar power plants that you have certainly heard about, uh, Noor 1 and Noor 2, etc. There are four different huge solar power plants that are going to be built in Morocco. And these um, will probably not serve for the poor populations in the rural areas, but rather for uh, big industries and cities. Uh, and so this is why we decided to um, work with these two partners. Uh, in the next slide, uh, you will see them uh, again. Oh, no, sorry. <laughs> Their logos is not there anymore on the slide. But uh, the, the partners are this foundation um, and the uh, Union for Cooperatives of uh, uh, Women working on argan oil, uh, as also a big network uh, that will... Um, promotes social and solidarity economy in Morocco. Uh, and we have decided uh, to work with them on building those solar cookers. As you see, this is the box model uh, in Morocco. So we fully agree with Solar Cookers International that it is important and uh, crucial to have a, a local production with local material and also with the technologies that are accessible to people uh, in rural areas. So this solar cooker is very easy to build, and we are going to, to uh, set up two women cooperatives that will be able to start a real business uh, with solar cooking. Uh, and next slide. So as you see, these solar cookers have been used already in uh, different schools uh, and they uh, are able to provide meals for uh, pupils uh, who sometimes um, have very little uh, ingredients and, and meals uh, when they go to school. So uh, it's, it's a great promotion also of uh, uh, hygienic and uh, healthy food uh, at school. Uh, and then the production will uh, uh, bring new jobs for uh, women in the south of Morocco. We will also have a cooperative in the north of Morocco where you have other rural areas. Uh, and it will be uh, creating a, a few new value chain in, in that country. Uh, in the next slide, uh, we'll go to... Uh, we have... Some, yeah. Um, so I'm now switching to another country and uh, going back to India, so to say, because uh, WCF works with a lot of partners. And uh, actually, we have projects in Uganda. Uh, we have projects also uh, in um, Ethiopia, in Senegal on solar cooking. And we also um, work with the uh, uh, All India Women's Conference as our fellow partners from the Women and Gender Constituency. Uh, they have developed solar food dryers uh, that create new income for women farmers. So since 2017, as part of their social economic program, uh, all Indian women partners have included solar food dryers as key element for energy transition and climate mitigation providing food security and food quality in rural areas. Uh, it enables also to reduce food waste because these uh, solar cookers actually transform fruit juices uh, into fruit bars and fruit candy. And it is really a source of women's empowerment through micro-entrepreneurship. It has raised the income of the women who use that. Uh, and it really is a pillar of a stronger local economy. And all these elements that I'm talking about here have been recognized by many members of the Women and Gender Constituency as fundamental uh, for our work. Um, and that is to say, empowering women to participate in the 
climate action, in the energy transition, and in the same time improve their livelihood and create local economies, uh, be, um, how to say, uh, be a pillar of transformation for uh, the entire society, basically. Next slide. So let me thank you now as um, on behalf of the Women and Gender Constituency, which is a very big family. We usually, at this time of the year, gather together during the climate COPs. Now we have to do this virtually, but I'm very happy to be a, have the opportunity to be a part of this uh, webinar uh, and, and special event. Uh, and very happy to be soon collaborating uh, on the Moroccan project I was just uh, presenting to you today with Solar Cookers International. Thank you very much. Thank you, Anne, so much for sharing that valuable perspective uh, and that history on the constituency. It's it's really great to hear more about where things have come from and where things are going. So thank you for all of your efforts on that and for including Solar Cookers International. So I'd like to invite our speakers. We have just a couple minutes left. So I, I would like each of us to think about any particular closing thoughts that we would like to share about the importance of solar cooking in empowering women and addressing climate um, or the current pandemic as well. Um, Alan, would you like to start? Thank you. Yes. Quickly, I would just say as a reminder to everybody listening here today, that solar cooking has a very important, easily accessible aspect to the Paris Agreement, to the fight against this climate crisis that we are all being faced with, and that with solar cooking, you can reduce CO2 emission, black carbon emission, otherwise known as soot, and these are key asks from the United Nations framework on the conference of, and the Convention of Climate Change. So keeping that in mind and how the impacts of solar cooking primarily benefit women and young girls who otherwise are typically struggling daily to access fuel for cooking. Just wanted to drive that point home. Thanks, Caitlin. Thank you, Alan. And Jonak, we are happy to have you here. Do you have any closing thoughts that you'd like to share? We just have one one minute left. Uh, so Shaligram has a question. Uh, video of it. Is the question, what is his question? I could not see. His question is, instead of well-proven technologies and technologies for harnessing solar energy, uh, why not? so popular solar cooking, drying, and food processing, and large-scale utilization of the sustainable energy, zero-budget, freely available sun energy. So I think uh, he's asking about solar drying and food processing uh, on a large scale. Uh, do you want to share about yeah. that, John? Okay. Yes. Uh, we have been training people in solar food processing, and recently, for the last three years, uh, I have been a mentor of promoting startups. Uh, we have startups like Varun Reheja, who is doing solar food processing, and he's, he's, he's made many solar dryers and installed all over the country at different places. And there, there are women who have started making ready to eat organic solar dried food you can uh, entrepreneur so it is it is it's an issue of scaling up i'm sure uh, we after the covid solar cooker international is going to come to india we are going to have a huge conference and we are going to promote and then we make solar cooker international had done uh, earlier a big, big conference in uh, munisheva ashram gujarat and now I, we have an offer from Bits Pilani. And uh, hopefully we, we are looking forward to this solution to COVID. In the meanwhile, we are all doing our best to promote it on the virtual mode. We are very fortunate that we are associated 
as global advisors. I don't think I'm really an advisor, but I think I'm a part of the Solar Cooker International family. And uh, we all work together and it's a great opportunity. And I, I must thank all the participants uh, who are in different zones and we are still able to meet. And thank you so much, everybody who came. And uh, I'm sure this is going to be uh, available later on. Kathleen should say that. Thank you so much, everybody. Namaste from India. <laughs> Thank you so much, Donak, for sharing your invitation and for being such a fabulous collaborator. It really is like a solar cooking family. So thank you. And do you have any closing thoughts? We're just over time. So I think that really um, there is no specific scale with solar cooking. And that is what is really wonderful. Uh, I think uh, what Alan has shown us is that you are able actually to use solar cooking even for a, a huge restaurant or, or a, a school that has hundreds of pupils. So um, it is really important uh, that now we work together on developing different applications that serve for the different needs. Uh, and basically the most important is that we are sure that through this model that you are developing of interconnecting uh, different organizations of different sizes in, in different um, continents, uh, we together push this a step forward um, as indeed solar cooking, solar food drying, solar food transformation is really the future for us and for fighting this climate crisis that we are uh, experiencing, yeah. Very well said. Thank you so much for sharing those thoughts. It, it does take all of us working together. Well, we are out of time. So I want to say a thank you again so much to our speakers for sharing their time and their expertise. And thank you so much to everybody who listened. And as I said, we will have it on our website, solarcookers.org. So please share it. Thank you again so much. And I'm wishing everybody a wonderful day, a wonderful evening, and wishing you much success in bringing solar cooking into your work and your life and sharing it with others. Thank you again. Thank you very much. It was my pleasure to be there. Namaste. Okay. <laughs>